OK, still to come, uh, all the weather news from Claire, who's down at Cowes, the Isle of Wight. And we meet the toddler who lost both his legs to meningitis just a week after his first steps. And now can't get suitable prosthetic limbs on the NHS. Now then, he's just uh, 22 months old and uh, little Harvey Parry has already had to endure more than most do in an entire lifetime. Just a week after taking his first steps, Harvey contracted meningitis, leaving him with septicemia and surgeons no option but to amputate both of his legs. Well, now Harvey's parents are fighting to get him prosthetic limbs he needs and say the ones he's been offered on the NHS are completely unsuitable. Harvey's here with his mum, Carol, his dad, Jonathan, and his sister is Zan. Is that the right pronunciation? It is. Thank you very much indeed. And of course, our own uh, Dr. Hillary. Thanks very much indeed. Good to see you. Uh, good to see you all. We need a microphone for Hillary, and we'll get one for Hillary just to take. But let me talk to you uh, first of all, uh, Carol. Um, this must have been a horrible shock, first and foremost, to discover that he had meningitis. It was an absolute shock and horror. And um, we were very scared and devastated. But when you're in that situation, you just got to go with it and just pray to God, and that's what we did. Yes, and he's, he's in good shape right? and enjoying that milk, that's for sure. And how does he, how's he how manage to get around? Well, he, he, he bum shuffles. and He's bum, shuffles. <laughs> he's bum shuffling that's really, you. really well. Yeah, and he's, he's doing fine. He also pounces. I'd <laughs> yeah. oh, better be, be careful, he might pounce on me. <laughs> Dad, um, I mean... Um, what have we got here? These are the ones you've been, you've been offered? Yeah. yeah these, just, we'll just, leave them, just leave them on the floor there. We'll get a shot of them. That's it. Okay. Now, tell me why those are not suitable. Uh, they're uncomfortable. Uh, um, basically, uh, there's uh, cups which um, go on the stumps. Yeah. And uh, it's um, just the way um, how um, the whole thing is. They're um, uh, clumsy and uncomfortable. Yeah. And they fall off, right. basically. And have you, Izan, have you seen, uh, have you seen him trying to, trying to use them? Yeah, he's really uncomfortable and he just cries every time we try and put them on him, so... Right. Is it possible that he'll grow into them? Is it, I mean, it's a very a daft thing to say, but they look pretty big for someone of, of his size. Actually, they are too big. Um, when we first got them, they, these are a new set. <laughs> they, he's, he's outgrown his first set already. Yeah. And um, this set, we, we collected on Friday, and... Uh, they're a bit different because they, they're meant to help him to weight bear. So this sort of goes underneath his private parts and it's very hard for him. So at the moment, he hasn't been able to put these on at all and keep them on for less so than a come, minute. Now you've got a sock over them, but they're also the wrong colour, aren't they? They are the wrong colour, yes. Um, they're you've got a brown sock on them. But chocolate in fact, brown. Well, that's the colour that they give you. Yeah. When we first got them, they just had metal bits yeah. on them. You see, um, Hillary, they're quite heavy as well. And we, we've been here before. Apparently it's cost £30,000 yeah, to get them privately. For between thirty to £40,000 a year there will be, because every uh, sort of six to eight weeks, Harvey will ha be getting growth spurts. I see, going to get so a new set. And he'll, so you know, he'll need new sets throughout his life. We've been here before. I remember interviewing a, a, a black lady on the programme, or a lady of mixed race, I can't remember, uh, uh, quite recently actually, within the last couple of years, who had a similar problem. She said, you know, why am I given a white one? You know, surely the NHS have got... Sure. Yeah, Once I, I mean, A to fit and B the right colour. I mean, can you imagine you have a child who develops meningitis, septicemia, has to have legs amputated. You, you'd expect, uh, you know, afterwards that the prosthetic limbs at least were uh, custom made, the right, uh, uh, the right weight, uh, that they were comfortable, the right colour uh, to suit uh, the, the skin colour. Uh, and unfortunately, on the NHS, you're not going to get the same sort of technology that you would get um, if you get a, a private uh, prosthesis. Just down to money? It's down to money. Uh, it's down to money, absolutely. And uh, unfortunately, um, you know, I would say that, you know, if Harvey has to go to a private clinic uh, to get these limbs, it will make a huge difference. Yeah. They're lighter. They can uh, function better. They're more comfortable. They have the technology uh, in, in the private clinics that, that the NHS simply don't have, yeah. they don't have the resources for. 
Uh, and I would say, you know, that um, I would encourage you to apply for PCT funding because there's no reason why the private clinics um, can't be uh, funded for the prosthetics um, through the PCT. That means your GP is on board and your consultant is on board. They write the letters lo looking for funding from the, from the primary Just care trust what a PCT in your is. area. Primary Care Trust. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I need to remind him myself, actually. I can't remember. Well, we That's actually, we did approach our Primary Care yeah. Trust and they said that they didn't fund the legs. Um, they don't fund uh, no, the, no, these no, legs. No, no, no. So um, sure. I decided that I would make a placard and go out on the streets and, you know, just shout really loud on any high street and see if I could raise the money myself. Well, good on you. Let's, we've got to end it there. You've got to talk a little bit later on, I know, but we've got to, we've got to end it, uh, the item at, at this moment. Thanks very much, Dee, for coming in. Uh, wish you all the best with your appeal. And uh, you can find out more about uh, Harvey's story and uh, how to spot the early signs of meningitis on our website. You know it is, gm.tv. Time is 26 minutes past six. Let's get the weather with Claire now, who's on the Isle of Wight this morning. Now, he's just 22 months old, but already Harvey Parry here has had to endure more than most do in an entire lifetime. He's just learned to walk when he was forced to have both his legs amputated after contracting meningitis. Well, Harvey was ordered artificial limbs on the NHS, but his family say that they're not suitable. And Harvey's here, as you can see, a little bit sleepy this morning because we've got him up early. So, uh, understandably, he's just taking a little... Oh, he's going off to sleep now. <laughs> Bless him. Uh, his mum, Carol's here, dad, Jonathan, and uh, uh, sister, Isanna, along with Dr. Hilary. Good to see all of you here this morning. Now, uh, we'll let Harvey have a doze. He doesn't have to, he doesn't have to be awake. Most of, most of my interviewees are during the course of my interviews. He can have a, he can have a little nap if he wants to. But look, Carol, it, it must have been very, very tough for you, obviously, going through the initial trauma of the meningitis. Um, that was, must have been scary enough in itself. It's very scary, yes. Because mm. it, it all happened so quickly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the worst part was not knowing whether he'd make the next 48 mm. hours, as they tell you. Um, and when he got through that, and then we just had to get through each and every day, and he had and multiple the challenges. organ failure. So Multiple organ failure. failure. Gosh, so you, you survived a, a very, very difficult thing, that all of you have as a family, to, to see a loved one go through something like this. Um, thankfully, you know, he's come through that pretty well. He's obviously a little fighter, but he did have to have his legs amputated. And then the challenges didn't stop, did they? No. So what's happened with, with his prosthetic limbs, Jonathan? Uh, the main uh, problem is that they're too heavy. Mm. Uh, they, they are, I have to say, they're incredibly heavy. Um, they really are. I don't know, Andrew, you feel that. You're a strong man. Mm. Incredible, aren't they, for a little lad to hold you up. So they're very it's heavy. And you were concerned as well that they're not comfortable, really? No. Okay. Well, is this, is this what everybody gets? Is this standard? It yeah. is, yeah. yeah. This is standard on the NHS? Yeah. Yes, it is. I don't know. How is he coping with them? Well, he, he doesn't like them at all. Mm. Um, ap apart from that, Harvey's a little perfectionist, <laughs> and he likes things to be, you know, to look good. Mm. And they really don't look good. They oh, don't feel the good. Is odd. Mm. Um, they're chocolate brown, so they don't actually look like legs or skin. Mm. And the and they're covered with a tight material. Is that to make them the right colour, basically? Yeah, or get yeah. close to the right colour yeah. rather than a pinky yeah. white? But it, because he had legs before, mm. he knows what his legs looked yeah. like. So we want to try to sort of help him to be positive about himself mm. by getting those limbs from Dorset Orthopaedic Clinic that look like real skin, yes. you know, because they've got freckles on them, they've got... Uh, hairs on them, they've got little holes like our normal skin would have. The technology that we have today, basically, to, to make life better for people that are facing these challenges like Harvey is, uh, and it's frustrating, isn't it, Zan, for you to see your brother going through this, because you know that if you had the money, things would be very different. Yeah, because, you know, he should be running about, and he, he, still, he tries to do all the things he, he can mm. do, and it's just, you know, when he wants to go out in the garden, he can't, because he can't go on the ground and mm. you know he's just bum shuffling around everywhere. Tell me, it, it, it's terrible isn't it because first of all when I heard they said it, it seems terrible enough that we can't get the right colour in 2007 to make a youngster feel comfortable but the weight of them is extraordinary for such a Yes I mean they're not very functional he's small uh, the muscles at the top of his legs are, are not strong 
and uh, he's not going to possibly be able to manage uh, prosthetics as heavy as that. Now, the and NHS... is this what's on offer on the NHS, basically? Yeah. If you haven't got the money, that's what you get. Sure. I mean, the NHS does a good job, generally, uh, with the resources that they have. But technology moves on a pace. And privately, you can get prosthetics which are much lighter, uh, much more functional, much more comfortable, and which match the colour of the skin of the person mm. you're, tr you're fitting them for. Uh, and I think that's really important in these cases. So is it just about financial priorities? I guess when it comes down to it, you, 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 know, you, you can only get out what the resources are you know, put in. And uh, although uh, the, the people working in the prosthetic service for the NHS struggle to do as good a job as they possibly can, it's always the case that you're going to be able to uh, you know, get better equipment w with all the technological advances if you go privately. I now, you, it is the case that PCTs, primary care trusts, will sometimes fund um, prosthetics that are made in private clinics. So it's really important for uh, people to put pressure on their PCT. Get, get, yeah, I mean, uh, you're not taking this lying down, are you, Carol? You're making a fuss, but what have you done so far? Well, we did have a meeting with our primary care trust, which um, they said, sorry, but we don't, we won't fund these limbs. And I but went, you didn't you take to the streets with a placard? I did go to the streets with a placard, and the people of Wood Green have been really wonderful. They've donated uh, £3,000 you know, in 10 pences, 20 pences, 10 quid, 20 mm. quid. Um, and me and Sean have just walked the streets with a placard for a couple of days. Saying, give us some money. It just help us, you know. But um, now we have asked our doctor to help us because mm. we took Harvey to the doctors with the limbs. Mm. And she is going to apply to the primary care trust. But we've sort of been told that they're probably not going to fund them. Or if they do fund them, they might only fund a little okay. bit. So um, at the moment, we've got a website that we've um, put up and we're hoping that people will see this appeal and they will help us to help Harvey to have a normal life and yeah. just to be positive. Well, just to let you know, all the details of, the, of that appeal is on our website, gm.tv, and I'm sure you'll uh, continue to, um, to, to fight as any mother would, as any family would, uh, for Harvey to have a better life, like you say. We also have details of how to spot the early signs of meningitis, which led you into this position as well on that there, gm.tv. Thanks very much to all of you, and Harvey's still sound asleep. Bless him. I will uh, pass those over. <laughs> oh, he woke up. Sorry, Harvey. I didn't mean to disturb you. There you go. Thanks very much indeed. Almost 20 past eight this uh, Tuesday morning. I'll give you a little bit of breaking news. Tests on uh, animals culled after a suspected second foot and mouth outbreak in Surrey have confirmed that.